Okay, so I just built the uh, ADF copy board. Uh, basically what this is, it runs on a Teensy 3.2 and it interfaces here uh, to a plain old PC floppy drive. There's nothing special about that whatsoever. So, uh, I'm not gonna go into the software really because that's pretty self-explanatory. What this board does is it allows you to use a PC floppy hooked up via the USB port uh, and a Windows machine to mount the Amiga floppy disk on the desktop, read them, copy them, uh, verify them, uh, comparing them to an ADF file. So, like I said, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy to understand what they use. What I want to talk about today are some of the modifications that I made to the board. Uh, first and foremost, uh, this port took me a, I was stupid when I did this. What he originally had was uh, something, it, it basically came out to a female port like the uh, connector here that would plug in directly to the floppy in other words this board plugged in directly to the floppy via that however I had a whole bunch of header pins and for those of you that don't know what a header pin or header pin sets are they are this so all I did was I mounted a row of 34 here and a row of 34 here what you do is you just break off however many you need and so those become pins that stick out of the board what i had to do was make those pins go out the bottom side of the board because if you mount it with that style that plugs in it comes out the top of the board so as you can see that's the way that is mounted and then it will be correct the pin one ribbon is right there. It is away from the pin 34 pin, which is uh, screened on the board. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of other design decisions that I made. Uh, there is a whole list of parts that you could put on this board. Uh, there was a USB-B option here. You need pretty much absolutely no parts except for the header pins here to talk to the floppy. And then you could solder the Teensy board directly to the board. I put in a socket. Uh, you can cut sockets that you have in half. Like I had a whole bunch of these uh, 16 pin sockets. I just cut those down the middle and mounted those in there. For the pins on the Teensy board, I put those on myself, and guess what? More header pins. Now those will stretch out the socket, but it's not a big deal. You're probably not going to use this for anything else. Uh, the capacitor, that is actually not needed if your floppy drive is being powered externally. I'm using an ATX power supply for mine at the moment. What the capacitor does is if you're using USB power, uh, that can draw up to 700 milliamps. This is a thousand uh, microfarad capacitor, so basically absorbs uh, power fluctuations. Like I said, if you, if you use an ATX power supply, you don't need that and you don't have to worry about power. The other thing I did for a power supply is one of these pins, this one here, that is plus five in. The ground point is here, so you can use that for ground. You can cut and make your own floppy cable, or your own power cable, if you do want to power this via USB. So what I have done is this. These are just Arduino wires that I cut off and a very ugly, in ugly fashion, put those on a USB cable that I had lying around. Uh, you can search for the pinouts for what is plus five and minus five on USB. So now all you have to do is you push these pins onto the header pins and I made one red for positive five and one black for minus five. So you can power it also that way. Uh, on the other board that were soldered in, what I did was I took this row of header pins, I cut off the center pin because there's no hole there. So basically floppy power, if you're using what they call a Berg 
floppy power supply connector which if I can drag this over a little bit this is that standard power supply floppy connector that will push on and as you can see the center two pins are ground only the red and the black are used usually the black is a common connection like those two are tied together on the board in this case it's not but we have three pins so we've got positive five available, skip one, and then uh, ground is available. So instead, in lieu of uh, soldering it in, you can just push on your uh, power connector here. If you're using USB, this would be where the power comes out from coming in and then uh, goes to the uh, floppy drive if you do it that way. Uh, let's see, here's one note that was not obvious to me. This port here is solely for control of the Teensy and for issuing commands to it. Uh, that was what was confusing me at first because if you do put your USB port on here, the sole purpose of that is to supply power. Now there are some optional pins here that uh, may be used in a future expansion, but for now those are unused. So in summary, all you need to make this board work is you need to have the Teensy on it and you need to have a connection to floppy. I like this method because rows of header pins are super cheap. You can plug a cable into it and you can box this whole thing up and just have you know your power supplier wires from USB coming in and then output to your floppy and you could 3D print a floppy box or whatever or just lay it around like I've done here, lay it on something that's uh, insulating. So more options. I did not like the fact that this had a hard port output because it results in clearance issues with certain kinds of floppy drives. Like I said, if you try to plug this whole board in there and you had a, you know, whatever you had, I mean, it's, just, it's just easier to put a, plug a cable in than to try and plug this whole board in, in my opinion. Plus, like I said, it's cheaper. So if you got questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Uh, I did get the board working. It works fine. I have not tried the, um, the disc with an actual Amiga yet. I've got some other parts coming for that. So give me a subscribe. I know this was a long video. But at minimum, I believe that I've shown how you can build this cheaper and more versatile with things that you may already have around. Because I already had header pins. I didn't have a, a USB uh, port laying around and I didn't feel like tearing something apart uh, because I didn't have anything broken to tear apart as I'm sure some of you might have. So uh, comments are welcome, subscribes are really, really welcome and requested because we've got other neat videos coming. If I do have an insight on the software, something that I feel is worth posting, then I will post that. Uh, that is about it. Uh, that's about all I can really say. There's the back side of the board, nothing there, just where the pins come out. Thanks for watching.